Greetings, I am Herbert Erbadurp, and this is Herbert Erbadurp's Quick Tips. Today I'm going to talk about thinning paint. Thinning paint is pretty important in miniature painting. If you don't thin your paints you can obscure the details on your miniature and leave horrible, horrible brush marks. It can also make the paint harder to spread around. You can thin the standard acrylic paints used in modelling with water and it certainly works fine, though personally I like to use Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. This isn't only for airbrush use, you can of course use this for brush painting too. I don't know exactly what the chemical composition of this product is, but contrary to its appearance it is not just water, you can smell it. I suspect there's some of the acrylic binder in this and maybe some kind of retarder. The actual composition of this stuff isn't the subject of the video and you can research that yourself if you're interested. What I do know is that in my experience this works better than water, though water is perfectly acceptable to use for thinning paint. I like to keep thinner and water in old Vallejo dropper bottles. I found this to be very helpful in measuring consistent amounts of these things, rather than just eyeballing it. I'm sure there are plenty of other things people use as thinner too. For instance, some people use Windex, and I have tried that long ago, though in my results I didn't see a difference between using Windex and water, though the Windex did seem to make the paint dry out a bit quicker. People often ask me how much thinner I use with certain brands of paint, mainly Vallejo as that's what I mostly use, but it's not quite that simple so I can't really give a definite ratio of thinner to paint that I use with all Vallejo paints. Take Model Color for example, they are obviously the same brand, but different colours within this range are going to behave differently and are going to need different levels of thinning. Some colours are just thicker than others, and sometimes you just need a thinner paint for various different applications. But as a general rule of thumb, I mix my paints one part paint to one part thinner. I might add more or less thinner depending on how each individual paint behaves. I'm going to play with a couple of colours on my glass here to try and show you that they have different consistencies. First, chocolate brown. This is a fairly thick colour with a lot of pigment. You can see the orange ochre spreads out a little bit more than the chocolate brown. Then comes scarlet, which is the thinnest of these four. And finally ultramarine, which seems pretty close in consistency to the orange ochre. They're not wildly different, but they're different enough. I'm going to brush these undiluted colours onto the deck of my test model, which in this case is the hull of the Airfix Bismarck. Applying paint undiluted like this is generally not recommended, unless they are thin paints like Vallejo Model Air. This is what it looked like when it was dry. It might be a bit hard to see on camera, but I can see brush marks, and the paint has built up a little bit around the detail lines. It's not quite so bad after one single layer, but this is definitely something that will build up the more layers you do. And you can see, even unthinned, most of these colours don't cover the black well enough to do it in one coat unless you glob the paint on really thick, which is obviously going to look like garbage. Let's add some thinner. Here I have added a single drop of the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. You can see it spreads out way more than the paint itself does. Mix the paint and thinner together thoroughly. I spread the paint out and it handles quite nicely. It's still thick enough to get a good coverage, and it's not so thin that you would have to do way too many coats. Let's apply some to our Bismarck test bed. In all fairness this is a fairly rough application of paint, but it will demonstrate well enough. It goes on fairly nicely. This colour probably won't ever coat over black in one go, but it does have reasonable coverage. Let's add more thinner to see what happens. I don't think this is going to surprise anyone. I first added a single additional drop and mixed it around. The pigment seems to mix through the thinner fairly neatly. I didn't bother applying this to the test model. Next I mixed in two more drops of thinner. When mixing paint and thinners, I like to do it slowly, so even if I think I might need for example three drops, I'll start by adding one, mix it in and then see if I actually need more, and go from there. This way you get the paint and thinner mixed together a bit more thoroughly and it stops you from thinning your paint too much. The result is a lot thinner and very liquidy. I apply some of this to the Bismarck and unsurprisingly it doesn't cover as well. A few coats would definitely be required. You can see there was some capillary action around that part there. Again this is a very rough application, and you can see I've left a couple of bubbles. These are caused by moving the brush around too quickly. That's something to try and avoid if you want to lay down nice smooth coats of paint. I then do the same thing with the same paint as before, only this time I'm using water. The results of just adding one drop are very similar to with the thinner, not entirely surprising. I apply this to the Bismarck next to the other tests and I achieve fairly similar results. I didn't record myself 
adding the second drop of water, but it also behaves a lot like the thinner. I add two more drops of water and the paint is obviously much thinner. I apply this to my Bismarck and it clearly doesn't cover nearly as well as the equivalent mix with the thinner. The capillary action also doesn't quite seem to work as well as with the thinner and I found I pretty much had to force the paint into the corners. Let's have a look at how all of these tests have dried. The two examples with Vallejo airbrush thinner are on the left. You can see both examples in the center with a single drop of thinner each are quite similar. The Vallejo thinner one has a slightly better consistency, but you would definitely have a hard time telling the difference between the two after a few coats. You can't see any brush strokes and there is much less buildup around the raised detail parts. The other two examples that were thinned down a lot more are definitely different. The one using water on the right looks really bad. I'm not exactly sure of the science behind this, but I think it's because the water doesn't completely mix with the paint or something like that. I assume the thinner has some kind of binder that helps with this. To be fair, you probably wouldn't normally be trying to apply paint that thin to begin with, especially not over a black primer. But if you want really thin paint, the results would seem to suggest that using the airbrush thinner is the best way to go for that, especially if you want to use the capillary action that caused the colour to be quite bright around those raised parts on the deck. You can see a couple of spots of more intense colour where there were bubbles in the thin coat, but that can be avoided easily enough by brushing the colour on more carefully. So how much should you thin your paint? Well that's not really something I can give an exact one solution for all situations type answer for. You really should experiment and figure out what consistencies you like working with. Like I said before, I normally use a roughly 50-50 ratio of paint to thinner as a starting point, and for most paints that's all I need. It does vary though. As I'm painting I might decide that the paint needs to be a little bit thinner or a bit thicker, and there are some times when not thinning the paint at all is beneficial. I've found when dry brushing I get better results with undiluted paint, and sometimes stippling on thick paint can add a little bit of texture you might want. There's also environmental factors to consider, though I'm sure they're not really that that big a thing to worry about, especially with brush painting. I live in southeast Queensland, Australia, where it's almost always hot and often humid. Paint might behave differently if you live in different places, especially extremely cold or dry places. This isn't something I possess a lot of knowledge about, and all of my experience with painting and thinning paint comes from working in this environment. I think that sort of thing is more of a concern with airbrush and rattle can use though. So after all that rambling, my tip is to start with a 50-50 ratio Ratio, try it out, pay attention to your results, and then try adding more or less thinner to your mix. It shouldn't take you too long to figure out what does and doesn't work for you. As you go, you'll figure out which colours need more thinning and which colours need less. I guess it's an experience thing, and I think you will be a better painter if you take the time to figure out things that work for yourself, rather than if you just follow blindly what other people say to do. That's not to say ignore what other people say, quite the opposite. Try out their ideas and see if it works for you. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm totally not an expert on anything and my ways of doing things obviously aren't the only way. I'm always interested in hearing about more effective or efficient methods, so let me know if you've got any ideas in that regard. If you have any other techniques, tools or products you would like me to demonstrate on Herbert Erpaderp's quick tips, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. If you thought it was stupid, thumbs down. If you know anyone that might find this useful, feel free to share the video with them. If you've not done so already, go ahead and subscribe to be notified of future videos. If you really like the videos I make and you want to see them a little earlier than everyone else, please consider helping to support the channel via Patreon at patreon.com slash herbertherpaderp. Click the Patreon logo on screen now or the link in the description. I'll be back again soon, so until then happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.